Welcome back, everyone, to Pod of Thrones. I'm Jeff. I'm Jennifer. This is... <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What's wrong? <laughs> my, my voice is scratchy. <laughs> I, I didn't even notice. Uh, <laughs> so this is it. Uh, we are doing the Game of Thrones Season 7 in 30 minutes. Say, don't start your timers yet, everyone. Right. Not until we say go. We're just, we're just talking about what we're about to do, and it takes a lot of energy, so bear with us. We're psyching up now. Um, we're actually going to record this, and then we're going to pause, go watch seven hours of, of television, and then, come back, and then we'll come back and record with all of our notes. Um, we can have so, popcorn today. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> they need to make Game of Thrones official popcorn. Who's not, why isn't someone on that yet? And why aren't the Oreos out yet? I haven't seen them in stores yet. It's supposed to be Game of Thrones mm. Oreos, maybe. If we see them, we're going to have to buy a bunch before they get scalped. That means we're going to get fat, because you have to eat them before they expire. Maybe we'll save one for Already nostalgia. <sighs> anyway, let's not talk about that right now. I'll probably talk eat about, it in an emergency. Uh, <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's talk about season seven. So um, I feel like I remember a lot, but we really haven't watched a single scrap of Game of Thrones since it went off the air last time. Oh, well, except for that episode one that we did recently. I don't feel like I remember that much. I think I remember all the major points. I mean, we know where we know there's that big thing in the arena. We know who's going to die. We know where Cersei's going to end up where Jamie's going to end up. We know about John and Danny. Like we know, we know the big stuff. Or do you not remember some of this? What f- I don't know. Do you remember the opening scene of season seven? We watched <laughs> yes, it. At yes, a friend's they house. Came, it was it was Danny coming over and and coming to the shore, hmm. um, landing dragons. That's landing. Not what I was going to say. That was called dragons lair. <laughs> what is it called? <laughs> <laughs> dragons lair. Um, <laughs> no, it's uh, dragon stone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I had to think about it there, but. Um, okay, well now, see, I'm already intrigued because my memory of what the first scene is, is Walter Frey. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I thought that I was think the that's end of last opened. season. Well, the end of last season was him getting his throat cut. But then I think he's also the very first scene of this season where, uh, where he, uh, he has some words for his family. Right. <clears throat> but maybe you're right. Maybe it's Daenerys coming to Dragonstone. I could be wrong. So this is the kind of thing that we need to re-examine, and we're also going to try to pick out the major Highlights. events, the major points of interest, so that we are all <laughs> properly prepared. Right. For Not everybody eight. has seven hours to waste. Right. And it's really more, it's probably about eight hours total. Mm-hmm. It's every, every episode's like a little bit over an hour, except the last episode, which is an hour and a half. So... We're doing this for you guys because we love you. A recap. We want you to be ready for season eight, and hopefully we'll have you prepared. Short re- recap. The short recap. Right, because the whole point is, you know, if you had time for seven hours of watching, maybe you have time for seven hours of podcast that we did during the last season. But but when you need something quicker, this is where you come to our seasons and 30 minutes recaps. So here we go. Here we go. So we're going to hit pause now. We're going to come back and we're going to recap the crap out of this shit. (laughs) Recap the crap. Recap the crap. (laughs) (laughs) Episode one, Dragon's Down. Walder Frey has gathered all the males of his house. They have a big toast. And then he tells them that they missed some of the Starks when they killed everyone at the Red Wedding. Uh, And then uh, they all die from poison. And Arya pulls his face off and says, tell them the North remembers. Tell them winter came for House Frey. Uh, meanwhile, uh, over at the wall, Bran is watching an undead army with his glowy eyes and Mira, uh, makes it all the way to the wall with him. She's been pulling him the whole time and they meet Ed. Ed lets him in. That's about that. Uh, down at Winterfell, John wants a search starter for dragon glass and all men and women will learn how to fight. Uh, Tormund will go to man East watch with wildlings. Sansa and John have a fight in front of everybody about whether the Umbers and Karstarks should get to stick around or if they should give up their homes and castles. Uh, Sansa wants them out, but John lets them in. Uh, Ned Umber and Alice Karstark swear fealty to John and House Stark. 
Sansa is mad about this, and Baelish sees an opening. Uh, then John gets a raven, says that Cersei says that John needs to come down to King's Landing and bend the knee. Uh, Sansa tells John to be smarter than the rest. Ned and Rob made stupid mistakes. Duh. Uh, Sansa learned a great deal from Cersei. Doesn't necessarily like her, but respects her. Uh, meanwhile, Cersei is talking to Jamie about how Danny and Tyrion are coming, and they are surrounded by traitors of all types. Uh, but the Tyrells have supplies, and of course they need to fight a war, so that's going to be important. Then they talk about building a dynasty, uh, but they have no kids left, so who are they building this for? But also, they need allies, or else they're all screwed. Cersei has a plan. Euron and the Iron Fleet. Euron Greyjoy offers his fleet in exchange for Cersei's hand in marriage. She says no, but he's going to prove himself with mm-hmm. a priceless gift. Uh, we see Sam at the Citadel. His life involves a lot of soup and poop. Ew. But one day he'll get into that restricted section. He begs, he begs the Archmaester for access uh, because of what he's seen, but he's rebuffed. So later on, he steals the key and steals some books. Uh, in Winterfell, we see Tormund making sex eyes at Brienne. I feel mm. like that's going to be important someday. Uh, and then Baelish starts poking at Sansa. Why isn't she happy? Arya is traveling south. She meets Ed Sheeran, the Lannister soldier, and a bunch of others. She breaks bread with them and then decides not to sleep murder them all. She came close. Uh, the Hound is traveling with the Brotherhood Without Banners. They come upon the house that he once robbed when he was with Arya. Uh, that man has since killed his daughter and then himself. Uh, the Hound is talking about the meaning of the Lord of Light's actions. Thor Samir makes him look into the fire. Hound sees the wall in the fire, and he sees where the wall meets the sea. There's a castle there, probably Eastwatch, uh, and the dead are marching past it. And then later that night, Sandor I- I- insists on burying the dad and daughter, proving he's actually human. Sam is reading his stolen books, and he finds out that the entire mountain under the castle Dragonstone is actually made of dragon glass. He has to tell John, and then he briefly starts to meet Jorah, the grayscale patient. And finally, Danny gets Dragonstone. She tears down Baratheon banners, and she claims her throne. Episode 2, Stormborn. We open with Danny outing Varys at Dragonstone about him being him trying to poison her back in Essos. Yep. He convinces her, but he that he's loyal eventually. Melisandre arrives, telling Danny that she needs to summon Jon Snow because he's all that. So they send a raven to Jon, saying, "Please come and bend your knee for me." And then uh, Cersei is summoning all the lords around, trying to convince them to join her. Jorah's turning to stone still. Um, and the maester, they don't even want to try curing him because it's too dangerous. They say he has to leave tomorrow if there's no improvement. Kyburn shows Cersei the dragon harpoon that he's made. She's all horny for it. She gets all excited. <laughs> Meanwhile, Ilaria and Tyrion, Danny, Yara also were all strategizing in Dragonstone. And Danny proposes that they have the unsullied, unsullied take Casterly Rock while they surround King's Landing. Grey Worm is leaving for Casterly Rock, but first, Masande comes to see him, Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm, he tells her that he loves her, basically. They start kissing, then it's naked time, and he shows her his stump or whatever's down there. She's okay (laughs) with it. (laughs) And then he pleasures her, clearly. Mm -hmm. I don't know how he knows how to do that, but he does. Um, Sam is now secretly curing Jorah by debriding his skin, like cutting off giant scabs. All this pus is coming out. Gross. Arya is talking to Hot Pie. He's always stayed in the same place, bacon for everybody. And he informs her that the Boltons are dead and Winterfell with Sansa. So she decides she's going to go there rather than keeping on her quest to kill Cersei. Sam's raven arrives at Winterfell and tells John that there's dragon glass underneath Dragonstone. So he says that he's going to go and take the invitation and leave Sansa in charge. And she's all kind of excited. Baelish slinks into the catacombs just before John <laughs> is, is leaving. And he's trying to win John over with some kind of weird, I don't know. John didn't buy anything he was saying. He's like, you don't belong here. Then we go to Arya. She's in the forest, and all of a sudden it gets super cold. First, you think you're going to see some dragon or some uh, White Walkers, but no. All these wolves surround her, and then comes Nymeria, a giant wolf. And, but then at the end, she says, that's not you. I don't know what that meant. Ilaria and Yara are cohorting, and while they're on the ships, they start making out. But then all of a sudden, this explosion happens, and they find out that it's Euron attacking 
There's this huge war, blood and fire is going everywhere, and there's chaos. Eventually, Yara is defeated, and Euron has her at knife point and wants Theon to come and fight him, but instead, Theon jumps in the water like a big ding-dong rather than helping his sister. And that's all I've got. That's where we end. And Delaria gets captured. Right, Delaria is kidnapped. Sexy Snake gets captured. Uh, a couple of the snakes are died. Whippy Snake and Speary Snake are down. Mm. They're they are died. <laughs> Episode three: The Queen's Justice. John arrives at Dragonstone, uh, and immediately upon meeting, Davos takes a liking to Masande. Mm-hmm. Uh, they get buzzed by a dragon. It's all very funny. <clears throat> then Melisandre and Varys have a meeting. He thinks it's kind of weird that she doesn't want to meet John, but uh, we know they have a history. She's not going to see him. Uh, But she does say she's going to leave and come back maybe one last time because she has to die in Westeros, just like Varys does. Uh, John does not want to bend the knee for Daenerys, but he does want her help and says that she needs him and starts going on about all of the stuff that's happening up north that no one else knows about. Uh, Danny was born to rule the Seven Kingdoms, and she will. She's not really interested in this whole King of the North thing. They have a lot of squabbling, and then Varys scuttles in and uh, distracts her because he has to talk to her about the whole thing with Euron attacking and taking down pretty much the whole fleet. Then we see Theon get pulled from the water by Iron Islanders, and they're not very happy to see him. Uh, and then uh, just after that, we see Euron riding into King's Landing with Ilaria and Yara and, of course, Sexy Snake. Uh, I believe her name is Tyene, but she's always going to be my sexy snake. Uh, Cersei is very happy and says that she will marry Euron after the war is won. Not exactly in those words, but she does say he'll get what he wants. Cersei confronts Ilaria in the dungeon. She kisses poison onto Tyene and leaves Ilaria to watch. Ilaria will have to live on to watch her daughter rot. They'll force feed her if they gotta. Uh, and then she goes off to fuck Jamie, and she doesn't care who knows anymore. Yeah, that must have made her real horny. Yeah, nothing's hornier than... Someone that's about to die and rot in your dungeon. Cersei then, very busy girl, has to meet with the Iron Bank of Bravos and promises she'll pay her debts within a fortnight, which we're going to find out is all because of sacking Highgarden. John gets Tyrion to ask Danny for mining rights to the Dragonglass. Danny meets with John. They have a little heart to heart, and then she gives him the go ahead for that. So things are looking up. Up in Winterfell, Sansa's doing a great job. Baelish is counseling her to fight in her mind. Everybody's your enemy. Everyone's your friend. Fight everything and everyone at every time in your mind. He's so weird. And then nothing can surprise her. It's not terrible advice, but it could drive you crazy. But then Bran arrives at Winterfell. He doesn't even hug Sansa back. It's really creepy and weird and unfortunate. Uh, They talk for a little while. Uh, She tries to make him lord, but he says he can't be lord because he's a three-eyed raven. He won't explain... (laughs) He won't explain what that means or why, really, but he does start getting creepy uh, by talking about her wedding night uh, to Ramsay. You mean her raping night? Her raping. Wedding raping night. Raping wedding night. Let's see. Back at the Citadel, Jorah is cured, and Sam's kind of in trouble. Or is he? Yeah, he is, but he should also be proud of his accomplishment. Jorah's free to go, and Sam is being punished, but uh, he's not being thrown out. He still gets to study. He doesn't have to clean chambers anymore. Yeah, he's just going to be copying scrolls. That's way better than poop and soup. Yep. (laughs) Uh, Danny wants to go after Euron, but is advised against it. She's very angry. Uh, And then the attack on Casterly Rock is going forward. It's not going to be easy, but Tyrion knows how to get a strike team in through the sewers. So the Unsullied win, and win seemingly pretty easily. But then their boats are wrecked. Most of the Lannister force actually isn't there after all. Um, The Unsullied have no way home. Euron wrecks their boats. Yes, Euron wrecks their boats. Mm Mm-hmm. And the real Lannister army is on the march to Highgarden, which they take easily. We don't even see the battle. Jamie goes to talk to Olena. They have a long and unpleasant talk. She knows she's doomed, uh, but uh, it's not going to be that bad. Jamie lets her take a painless poison. And after she drinks it, she gives one last fuck you by confessing that she's the one that poisoned Joffrey and enjoyed watching him die. And she wants Cersei to know it. Episode four, The Spoils of War. We open on the troops of the Lannisters going home after they have sacked Highgarden with all of their, of course, spoils of war. Cersei hears the great news and she tells the guy from the bank that she's, go- <laughs> <laughs> that she's going to repay her debt. And then, of course, immediately starts scheming for more money to get more troops and stuff since just about all of hers are dead. The Golden Company. Baelish is talking to Bran, and he's still trying to wheedle his way in. He gives Bran the the knife that uh, was Valerian still tried to kill him by the 
The cutthroat. Cutthroat. Thank you. <laughs> Bran is just kind of like, whatever, you know, he didn't really say much or do much or have any reaction. But then Mira comes in and she's leaving. Bran, he knows she's angry, but he really can't feel anything. So all he does is like, goodbye. And uh, Arya arrives in Winterfell and the guards almost don't let her in. They don't believe that she's really Arya because she's supposed to be dead. As they're arguing over what they should do, she slips away and she and Sansa reunite in the catacombs. Arya meets the three-eyed raven, Bran, <laughs> who's not Bran anymore, at the Weirwood tree. And, oh, they're all confused about why Littlefinger gave the dagger to Bran because Sansa says he doesn't give anything away unless he wants something and she wants to know what he's getting. Brienne is very happy to see all the kids at home now, now that Arya's there. And, of course, Baelish is always spying. He's always got his ear to the door. He's always looking around the corner, and he's, you know, somehow scheming. John finds Dragonglass back at Dragonstone, and he shows Danny the hieroglyphs that they found from the Children of the Forest, which look like crayon drawings to me. But it They're shows children. that they fought with, I know, but still, shows that they fought with man against the White Walkers at one time. Danny says that she'll fight with John, if he bends the knee. Then she learns about Casterly Rock, how uh, there was really nobody there to fight, just a very small leftover troop, and it was abandoned. And she also learns about Highgarden being sacked and devises a plan to attack with her dragons. She's sick of this shit. She's getting it over with. In Winterfell, uh, Arya spars with Brienne, who is really impressed with her skills. Baelish is still looking around the corner, watching them with his little smy smirk. Smy spurk. <laughs> oh, and Theon arrives at Dragonstone. He looks really ashamed, and John is pissed off, and the only reason he doesn't kill him is because he helped save Sansa. Got her out of Winterfell. Got her away from Ramsay. Right. Danny flies on Drogon towards the Lannister armies, just as they're all getting ready for the night. It was kind of a surprise attack. And they they know she's coming because they can hear the earthquake and the screaming of the Dothraki armies. And then all of a sudden, the dragons come, and they set fire to everything. There's this epic battle, of course. And Bronn gets into a little scuffle with one of the Dothraki who's chasing him around. And then all of a sudden, he happens upon the dragon harpoon and gets it out. And he's shooting at Drogon and Danny. He misses him once, then shoots again and actually gets him right in the neck area, shoulder area. Then Drogon has to land, but also destroys the harpoon. Jamie stands back and he's watching everything. All of a sudden, he's like, oh, I'm going to go get him because Danny's trying to pull out the thing, harpoon. And all of a sudden, Drogon turns to him and starts to fire his fiery throat. But Bronn pushes him out of the way. We don't really know it's Bronn, but we find out it's Bronn. It's Bronn. Yeah. It's Bronn. Pushes mm -hmm. him out of the way. Jamie lives, but he's sinking to the bottom of this stupid lake. It's just right there at the shallows. I don't know how he sunk so far, but that's all. Episode 5, East Watch. All right, we're still at the battlefield, uh, except way off down the river or whatever. Bronn uh, and Jamie are wet and muddy. Bronn is not going to let Jamie die till he gets his castle, but he's also not going to help him fight dragons anymore either. Fuck that. Daenerys has a bunch of captured Lannister troops, and they kneel to join her because they don't want to die, except for Randall and Dick and Tarly. They wind up getting themselves cooked by Drogon. Uh, Jamie reports back to Cersei. They talk about their options, and really, at the end of the day, they just have to keep fighting. What choice do they really have? Drogon uh, gets home to Dragonstone with Daenerys, of course, but Drogon lands near Jon Snow, and they have what I could best describe as a moment. John even gets to pet Drogon for a little while, and Daenerys is clearly moved by that. Mm. Uh, then Jorah also returns to Dragonstone, gets a big hug from Danny, which is really all he ever wanted, sort of. <laughs> Bran is warging into a flock of ravens. I thought uh, it was wooding. No. Yeah, I guess. We, uh, there was two different. Okay. <laughs> no, well, it's you're, you're right. Uh <clears throat> they, uh, the, the flock of ravens goes over the wall. They see the army of the dead. The Night King looks up breaks the magic spell. Uh, but Bran goes and tells the maester that he needs ravens. He's got some notes to send, and we see immediately that those notes go to the Citadel. The Citadel is reviewing those notes from Bran. Sam happens to overhear and says, please listen to this dude. I know him, but uh, 
the Archmaester at best thinks, you know, it could be something to it, but maybe it's also a ploy from Daenerys to distract local troops. So they're going to keep investigating. Hi. But they knew the Tarleys were burned alive. That Yeah, never it's not happened. about the dragons. Uh, it's sorry. about the army but of the dead. But if they can believe in dragons, then why can't they believe in that? I, I don't know. Come on. Tyrion and Varys discuss Danny burning people alive. They need to find a way to make her listen. They're, they're a little worried about her. Uh, and then Varys also has a scroll for John from home, which of course he's read. But what it comes down to is that John has to do something. His He just found out his brother and sister are home and the army of the dead is coming towards the wall, says Bran. So they talk and talk and Tyrion gets an idea that they should bring the dead to Cersei to convince her that it's all real. And maybe they can put aside their differences for a while and win the war, the bigger war. Uh, Davos will smuggle Tyrion to talk to Jaime, and Jorah volunteers to go help capture a white, and Jon will get wildlings to help, too. Up in Winterfell, there's talk of making Sansa the queen, but she declines. Arya is upset that Sansa is sleeping in Nenny Cat's chambers, uh, and they fight about how to handle the other lords. Davos and Tyrion get to King's Landing. Davos goes off to Flea Bottom, while Tyrion sneaks into the Red Keep. Bronn was part of this somewhere along the line, and takes Jaime to see Tyrion, and they discuss how Daenerys wants a meeting. Davos, meanwhile, finds Gendry, formerly known as Gendry. <laughs> uh, Gendry is going to go with him. No qualms about that. And he picks up one badass looking hammer that I wish I also had because it's awesome looking. It winds up showing off how he uses his hammer when everyone's on their way out. And Tyrion almost gets caught by a couple guards. They, they're, I'm pretty sure they're dead. <laughs> pretty sure they're dead. One guy has no face. So then uh, Jamie and Cersei are talking about this whole meeting with Danny thing, and Cersei has uh, will agree to meet for a number of strategic reasons, but not the least of which is that she has a new baby to protect, and she rubs her little tummy, and Jamie gets all excited, you gotta be scared, daddy. and he did uh, so many emotions. Gendry introduces himself to John, and he wants to go north to help. The party departs. They head north, north, north. And then over at the Citadel City area, uh, Gilly and Sam are doing homework. Sam's annoyed at her reading, but she does, of course, mention this is the first time we get proof. Finds a listing of an annulment of Rhaegar Targaryen, who then went off and married someone else in Dorne. Yahoo! We know where all that's going. But Gilly found it first. Sam is just generally annoyed at his life, breaks back into the restricted section to steal a whole bunch of books and scrolls, and then just leaves town. He's out. He can't do this anymore. The story of Sam and Gilly. We do see Baelish giving a girl a coin in the old kennels. That's something we talked about recently, but I'm not sure what to make of it. I think he was just paying her for information, but we don't know for sure. Arya's watching. She stalks him all around Winterfell all day long. At one point, he's right outside his quarters when Master Wolken uh, hands Baelish a scroll. Uh, whatever it was, it's hard to find. He hides it in his room and then locks his door and leaves. So, of course, Arya breaks in. Of course, she finds it. But then we find out that was his plan all along. We only catch a quick glimpse of it. We don't know what it is yet, but we find out next episode. He's got a smirk on his face. Yes, he knows he's stirring up trouble. And then finally, John and his people get up to the wall. They're in East Watch, and they're talking to Tormund, who does not like the idea of this expedition, but he knows some other people that do, and it's the Brotherhood Without Banners. All those guys have been sitting at East Watch for a few days now, just rotting. And then they talk it out, and they are all going to go north of the wall together, which we see them do, and then that is the end of the episode. The next one, of course, is them beyond the wall and all the action and excitement that happens there. Episode 6, Beyond the Wall. John is taking Torment and Jenry and Jora and all of his team beyond the wall, and all of a sudden, John stops and talks to Jora about long cloths as he has it. You can have it. Jora's like, no, you keep it because you deserve it. Sansa and Arya are in Winterfell, and they're arguing about Sansa's letter to Rob that was written way back when she was with Joffrey, and Cersei made her write this letter asking them, asking Rob to surrender. It's a very convincing fight. Very, very convincing. Knowing okay. what's coming. The gang beyond the wall, they are in this huge snowstorm. They can barely see. They run into a giant polar bear that has blue eyes, and of course, they are in deep trouble. In the end, Top Knot almost dies. <laughs> The hound just sat there and Forest watched. of Mir. <laughs> um, back in Winterfell, Sansa is worried because she thinks Arya might do something about the letter that she found. She thinks they're going to tell the, the, all the other northern lords. Littlefinger is telling Sansa that 
perhaps Brienne can kill Arya if she poses a threat to her. And Sansa seems to kind of think about it. John and the team are still beyond the wall, and they find a small band of walkers. A huge fight ensues, and John ends up cutting one of the whites in half, which makes all of the walkers with him, they kind of just fall to the ground except one, and this is the one that they're going to capture. Lucky them. It shrieks, though, and calls all the walkers back. So John tells Gendry, run back to the wall. You're the fastest. Get them, get a raven to Danny and tell her to come save us. Then they run to the middle of the lake and land on an ice island where they just kind of watch the walkers for a long time because the walkers won't come onto the breaking ice. Gendry makes it to the wall and tells them, get the raven to Danny. He was very quick about it. Back at the ice island, Thoros dies of his injuries and or freezing. Beric suggests that they kill the Night King and it'll all be over. He seems to be the smart one this time. Sansa receives an invitation for, from Cersei, but Sansa's not going. She sends Brienne instead. Brienne is worried about her safety, but Sansa's a total bitch and sends her anyway. Danny takes her dragons to save John, and Tyrion really doesn't like it. He didn't want her to go. Meanwhile, the Hound decides he's going to throw rocks at the walkers across the way. And all of a sudden, one rock doesn't sink into the lake, so they all start closing in on the ice island Another epic battle ensues, and they are totally hopeless because there's so many of them. But all of a sudden, Danny arrives, and ooh, fire. She totally lights him up. (laughs) The Night King throws a javelin, though, and kills Viserion, sinking him into the bottom of the lake. All of a sudden, the Night King and Jon lock eyes, and Jon's like, oh, fuck, run, everybody. What'd you say? Fall in love. <laughs> yes. Uh, but as John's fighting his way back to the dragon, everybody else is already on. He's fighting his way back and he falls into the fucking water. Danny has to leave on Drogon with the remaining survivors. The White Walkers actually disperse, but then uh, John pulls himself from the lake and gets to the shore. And all of a sudden they're like, hey, that dude's still alive. Let's go kill him. All the horde comes back again, closing in on him. And it all looks to be lost. But then... Uncle Benjamin saves the day. Yay. Yay. The rest of the group reaches the wall. Danny's at the top looking over kind of forebodingly, uh, waiting for John, I assume. And then he finally comes out of the forest. Back at Winterfell, Sansa searches Arya's room and she finds all of her faces. Arya catches her and kind of creeps her out. She tells her about the faces game and Sansa's really not playing along. She's like, I, I want to know about where you got these faces. Arya tells her she can become anyone, even Sansa. Um, And Sansa's like, what the fuck? Back on a boat, I believe going to King's Landing, Danny and Jon talk. And he apologizes to her for killing Viserya, and it's pretty much his fault. He holds her hand, and then Danny vows to Jon that she'll help him defeat the Night King. Jon calls her my queen Mm -hmm. and says she deserves it. They fall in love. The walkers pull Viserya from the lake. Night King touches him, and all of a sudden, it turns him into an ice dragon with beautiful blue eyes. Gorgeous eyes. Yep. How could you not love those eyes? Episode 7, The Dragon and the Wolf. All right, we got the Unsullied standing outside King's Landing. King's Landing's preparing their defenses. The Dothraki come on in, too. It is a tremendous amount of troops outside there. King's Landing has the Iron Fleet. That's about all they got, from the look of it. The Hound is uh, on a boat, checking on his little zombie in a box. Everything's still good. Everyone heads for the King's Landing Dragon Pit. We have a Tyrion and Podrick reunion, and also Braun. They all love each other, sort of. We also have a Brienne and Hound reunion. They talk about how they both were just trying to protect Arya, but now Brienne tells the Hound that she no longer needs a protector. Very true. They wheel in the zombie in a box. Uh, Cersei and Jaime and Euron in the mountain arrive. The Hound talks to his brother. I want to come back to this line. You know who's coming for you. You've always known. Danny arrives via Drogon. Rhaegal's also flying around. No Viserion. Sad, sad. Euron starts taunting everyone just as the meeting begins, but is told to sit down. Tyrion starts the discussion, and Jon comes in and talks about the army of the dead. Cersei is not moved. She thinks it's all a joke, so they release the zombie. Kyburn is fucking creaming his shorts. He loves this. And Jon demonstrates how you can burn the zombies and how you can dragon glass the zombies. So Euron says, fuck it. Peace out. I'm gone. I don't want any part of this. And he says he's going back to the Iron Islands. 
Cersei almost accepts a truce, but demands that Jon stays in the North and not take sides, but Jon has pledged himself to Danny and fesses up about that, so that whole thing falls apart instantly. Danny and Tyrion are mad at Jon for not lying. Tyrion will go talk to Cersei alone. They debate whether or not uh, he wants to destroy the family, the Lannister family. He dares her to kill him, but she can't, and Tyrion figures out while they're talking that she's pregnant. So Danny and John are out there talking in the pit about dragons and children and how Danny can't ever have children. And John points out to her that maybe Mary Mazdor wasn't the best source of information when she said that Danny would never have kids. Tyrion and Cersei come back out together. Cersei says she'll march north and help them in the Great War. Wow, big news. Speaking of big news, Sansa hears about John bending the knee. Baelish thinks it's because John wants to marry Danny. They're both single and hot, you know. And Baelish thinks that she could possibly take the throne of the North. But Sansa's scared of Arya. And they decide that Arya probably wants to murder Sansa and take leadership for herself. All Baelish's guidance. Danny and John will sail north together. As they're leaving, Theon wants to talk to John. Theon never understood how to do the right thing. John forgives him for being an idiot all these years uh, and calls him both a Greyjoy and a Stark. Theon wants to save Yara like she tried to save him, and he goes to rally the Iron Islanders for saving Yara, but he has to fight for it. He takes a massive embarrassing beating, but he turns things around thanks to his numb crotch. <laughs> for Yara! Sansa summons Arya to the Great Hall in Winterfell. Bran is also there. Sansa says she has to defend her family and says, You stand accused of murder. You stand accused of treason. How do you answer these charges? Lord Baelish. <laughs> uh, he murdered Lysa Arryn. He conspired to murder John Arryn. There's all sorts of other things. But basically, he started all the shit that's gone wrong through this whole series. And he denies the charges. But Bran is there to very blandly corroborate the stories. Baelish tries to cry his way out of it. And then Arya cuts his throat, but good. Uh, back in King's Landing, Jamie is making a plan for the march north. And Cersei has to stop him because he's an idiot. She's not marching north. Jamie's not happy about all this lying. And he one, at one point points out, our child will never be born if the dead come south. The Iron Bank will make a difference in their poor troop counts, says Cersei. Euron is not betraying her and leaving. He's actually just on his way to Essos to pick up the Golden Company. Jamie ain't having none of this. He leaves. She actually lets him, but only barely. And he rides out of King's Landing just as snow starts to fall. Sam gets to Winterfell and finds Bran... Uh, Sam wants to help John, and Bran says John needs to know the truth about himself. He's the son of Rhaegar and Lyanna. And then somehow Bran didn't know about the annulment. Bran still thought that John was a bastard, just a sand, not a snow. But Sam remembers the part about the annulment because he transcribed it before Gilly read it. And then Bran goes back and sees the exact moment of the marriage between Rhaegar and Lyanna. And at that same exact moment, John fucks his aunt. <laughs> uh, we, we learn that John's real name is Aegon Targaryen, and he's the real heir to the Iron Throne. Tyrion watches those two go into a room together and then just sort of Charlie Brown's away. <laughs> <laughs> Sansa feels a little bit bad about Baelish, but Arya and Sansa have a nice moment talking to each other. They miss their dad, but they're glad they're together. The pack is strong. Bran sits alone, wooding. He's watching the wall from a far, far distance. And then we sort of cut to the story of Beric and Tormund, watching as the undead army emerges from the forest, and then comes Night King on Ice Viserion. The wall crumbles under the blue fire. Let's just make that quick. Tormund and Beric are totally dead, right? They totally got caught in the crumbling. We sort of saw it happen. Oh. Yeah, we'll see. And then the dead march south, and that's how the season ends. Whew. There we go, babe. We did it. Are we all done? One more season recapped in 30 minutes or less. <sighs> it's a relief, isn't it? It's stressful. Do we recap season eight in 30 minutes? Because there's nothing new to look forward to, but I kind of feel like we should have a complete set. Mm, of course. All right. Got to close so it we'll out. So we'll do that someday. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so any final thoughts as we finish up this season recap? Anything strike out at you? I, I had a few extra notes that I wanted to revisit. Uh, tell you me of yours first. All right. Well, I'll, I'll go through my list here. So we talked uh, not too long ago about this fan theory that Baelish might not really be dead. He paid someone something and whispered something, and then maybe it was a faceless man taking his place. That's a fan theory. Mm. I'm not seeing it. I'm I was not hopeful. seeing it either. Although, I, although I was surprised at the way he died begging, and you know, it just doesn't seem very Baelish-like. 
it was not very Baelish like, but he was also out of options and his plan, his plan would have worked fine if probably if it wasn't for Bran. Right. Bran yeah. saw what was really he going on. He probably could have driven a wedge between Sansa and Arya. Maybe not have them kill each other, but it probably would have worked to some extent. He was not counting on the supernatural. No. He was just trying to have, he was trying to add chaos so he could climb the ladder. Right. That's all he does. Mm-hmm. So he he didn't know what the hell was going on. I think he was truthfully taken aback and confused by these sudden accusations. And then he was just trying to manipulate Sansa with some crocodile tears, I think. Of course. Yeah. What else can you do when you're in that position? You got, you're surrounded by everybody. Your people won't back you. Right. Yeah. Lord Royce even said, fuck off. Mm-hmm. I'm not taking you back to the Vale, you dummy. <sighs> I don't know why he would have thought Where is um, Robin? Robin. <laughs> Robin is probably in the Vale where it's safe and warm. And I wonder what he's doing. Safe. Last I heard, he was off to military school or something. Well, yeah, he was, <laughs> he was going to go get his education out in the world, but that was all on Baelish's orders. And right? It wasn't going very well. Maybe he killed him. Who? Baelish? Maybe killed Baelish Robin. killed Robin or no. has him locked away somewhere. Nah, Robin's still around. I don't know that we'll ever see him again if he's a major enough character for that, but he's he's still alive. Hmm. We'll we would, see. We would have heard if he wasn't. Maybe they'll go hide in the Eyrie because there's no way to get there. The undead army would have a hard time getting in the gates. That's mm-hmm. true. No one's ever succeeded before. Of course, no one's ever gotten past the wall before either. Um, Let's see. So there, there was one little note I took. So Arya, th- would, they were pretending, I guess, but when Arya was threatening Sansa about like, I have my knife, I know how to make faces, I could be queen if I wanted to, I just need your face. Mm-hmm. That whole thing. Was it to, an act? Well, it seems to have been an act. We don't really know when Bran told them what's really going on, but I hope it was that first time that they all met out in the tree. The tree. Area mm-hmm. when at, right after Baelish gave him that knife, right? I hope that's when they had to talk about Baelish being right because they cut out right then because they know Baelish is watching everything they do. So I feel like those fights were staged, but I, since everyone involved is an actor, it's one of those things where like they were probably play fighting a little bit too well. But what are you gonna do? It's a drama. Mm. Um, but that thing about Arya thinking that she can take the queenship if she just borrows Sansa's face. To me, that that just bolsters what I've been saying all along, which is that Arya will wind up on the Iron Throne at one point with either Baelish's face on or Cersei's face on. Okay, so let's say John is the real heir, and that's recognized. Yes. If he dies, who's next in line? <laughs> well, Daenerys, probably. What about Except Gendry? That she's a girl. Well, Gendry has a claim, but that claim comes claim. after the Targaryen claim because, oh, Jesus, I don't know. <laughs> that That's where things get very complicated. But does, does Gendry want the Iron Throne? The nice thing is he probably doesn't. Probably not. He doesn't seem like that. But maybe so. I don't know. He just, he, he wants to be Arya's man. Yeah, you think so? I think he thinks of her like a little sister, not. Well, I don't know. I don't feel like Arya would ever be romantically interested in somebody. It's hard to tell because she does smile occasionally and show that she can still have a little fun, but her fun is also like pretty, she's almost murdering people. Right. And- she she gets <laughs> off on murdering people, not by regular old romance. Everyone needs their hobbies. I'm not going to judge. Um, but anyway, she's talking about becoming queen by wearing a face. So I'm just saying, I think my theory could be true. Uh, let's see. The Golden Company's coming. Nothing much to say about that, except it should be interesting. I think it was Jora that used to be part of the Golden Company for a while, but also um, Daenerys' old boyfriend. Oh, yeah. Uh, Dario. Dario. Dario Naharis. He was part of Golden Company when he was growing up, I believe. So there could be some connection there. It could be like... Is he alive? Dario? Well, as far as we know, he was left in charge of keeping the peace in Marine, hmm. right? On Daenerys' behalf. That's right. Do you remember the movie Braveheart? Yes. Remember how that one Irish dude, who now that I'm thinking about it, looks a hell of a lot like Thoris of Mir, but it couldn't be the same guy. Um, that one Irish dude was all like, 
that's my island. And then the Irish mm-hmm. troops were supposed to be fighting for the king. And then they all met in the middle and they were like, no, no, we love that Irish dude. We can't fight you guys. I'm picturing maybe something like that where Dario and Harris could be involved in having the Golden Company choose not to work for Cersei after all. Oh, that'd be sweet. Or pretend like they are working for her and come help and then turn on her. Right. That That's, that's kind of what I'm hoping. Nice. Yeah. Could happen. Uh, let's see. How about the hound talking to his brother? Oh, so uh, I was re- reading up a little bit on that about when he said, you know who's coming for you. Mm-hmm. You've uh, always known. Could it be Arya? Maybe. But how would he always know that Arya's coming for him? Because he saw it in the fire. Well, but the mountain's always known who's coming. I know. I don't know. Unless always only goes back a few years. Maybe the mountain <laughs> knows he's on Arya's list. Hmm. Because she's on his list. Maybe it's his mom. Wait, he's on her list. Maybe it's mama. Like mama Clegane? Yeah. She could come <laughs> spank him. <laughs> With a rolling pin in her hands. <laughs> <laughs> My boys are fighting too much. <laughs> Yes. I have no idea. I mean, it, it could just be the hound talking about himself. Could be. That he's always vowed revenge on his brother. But it seems not like that. He could have just said, I'll be coming for right, you. Right. That's the thing, is that what makes sense is the quote-unquote Clegane Bowl that fans have been dreaming of for years and years of these two finally having it out and one of them kills the other. But yeah, I don't know. He's he said, referring to something from a long time ago. That's the way I felt. felt. You know who's coming for you. It's just... You've always known. Always. It just doesn't seem like it could be a first person reference. Mm -mm. And it doesn't, I mean, it seems too far back for Arya too. And he, Mountain doesn't really know who Arya is or care. (laughs) Probably not. I mean, he knows the Starks somewhere in the recesses of his deranged Franken mind, but it it would be pretty obscure. The last (sighs) Mm. time the Mountain saw, could have possibly seen or noticed Arya, she was a prisoner, an anonymous prisoner in, uh, Oh, I don't know, whatever that castle was. Right. So the, it, it was doesn't. a half-burned castle. Yeah. I know I should know what it is, but Heron Hall. Ah! Very good, Heron Thank Hall. Um, yeah, that just doesn't seem likely. So who is coming for the mountain? I don't know. I'm Maybe sure a lot death. of people... Sure. Well, death comes for all of us, as, as Thoros Amir said. We just have to keep fighting anyway. Mm-hmm. I thought that was very wise. I hope we get to find out. And if they drop it, I'm going to kick some ass. Whose ass? D.B. Weiss's ass. <laughs> okay. I'm all for that. We're coming for you, D.B. You've always known we're coming. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's what I got. Uh, those were my notes. Any other thoughts? Hmm. It's okay if the answer is no. I don't think so. All right. Yeah, I mean, I do, but I can't. None of them are coming to the top of my head right now. How'd you like John climbing on top of Danny? <whistles> if that was your nephew. Oh, they're so in love. Just saying. Well, I don't know that it's my nephew, so sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then after I find out, I'd be like, all. Oh. All right, well, big prediction there. What? How are they going to react? Are they going to just try to close their eyes and make it be okay because they've already fucked once. Why not keep it up? Or are they going to stop fucking? I don't know. I mean, it's kind of okay in the Targaryen world. Right. It's a family tradition. Uh, Tradition. They would make pretty babies. Or deformed babies. Or deformed babies. That's true. Um, At least there's some Stark blood. I'm really not. I'm not. I have no idea. What are they going to do? What do you think they're going to do? I think they're going to sail off into the sunset on Drogon's back. Together. Together. And leave the Iron Throne behind. It's kind of like Greece. Right. Exactly like Greece. Okay. It's, it's my Greece ending for Game <laughs> we'll of Thrones. Always. Exactly. They'll be singing. <laughs> All the gang will be singing and dancing below them. Uh-huh. It's been my theory for a while. All right. Well, that's a good theory. Thanks. I think one of them is going to die. Oh. I think it might be John, but I'm not positive. Maybe Danny. John seems the more likely one to die. He's already died once. Why not again? Maybe he can't die. Maybe he'll die as soon as the, the Lord- Night King dies, because then the Lord of Light's like, cool, thanks. Maybe John's the Night King. 
maybe they're tied together. Yeah. One life force. But I really think it's Bran. I feel like the Night King and Bran have the There's same There's a nose. lot of theories going on about that. You should research them and tell us all about it. Okay. Okay. And I say that knowing that there's a half decent chance that if you do research that and tell us all about it, we'll actually air that episode before this one because I got to put all of our all of our pieces together. But oh well, time travel's fun. Okay, so that's enough, I think, for our recap. We got other stuff to do in preparation for this new season, not the least of which look at some headlines and other fun things. So we'll do that uh, elsewhere and um, we'll talk soon, everybody. We're almost ready. Winter is almost here. It's almost time. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming for and you. And out. I'm coming for you. You've always known.